RF man here. I had one of my viewers ask me if I could make a video demonstrating how to use my antenna tuner with a linear amplifier. So I'm going to make a short video on this topic. I'm going to be using my ICOM 735 and one of my single LDMOS amplifiers. And I'm using an attenuator so that I don't overdrive the amplifier. And I'll also will be measuring power output and SWRs with a uh, Daiwa. This is a cross needle meter, so where the two needles cross gives you the SWR rating. And then my antenna tuner, which I showed in my other video. I'll be using the same antenna system that I demonstrated. So I have my long wire antenna, it's 53 feet long, which is a non-resonant length across the high frequency band. And then I'm using a 9 to 1 un-un, which does the impedance transformation from 450 ohms to 50 ohms. Then I also have my RF choke in line. Um, in this setup, I'm using the shielding on the coax. You can see my coax there next to my watt meter. I'm using the shielding as my counterpoise. So I want to choke out that RF energy so it doesn't affect any of my equipment and uh, make sure that I'm keeping everything grounded and, and keeping that RF out of the shack as we say. So I'm going to be tuning this for 10 meters which is 14.1 megahertz and 30 meters which is 10.1 and for these particular frequencies I don't have to change the position on the tuning coil um, depending on the on the uh, the frequency or the band I may have to increase the number of turns or decrease the number of turns um, and this will depend on the range of your variable capacitors. So obviously the wider the range of the capacitors and the tuning coil, then the wider the tuning range will be up and down the band. Um, this will tune from 160 all the way to 10 meters. Um, so it's, it's quite wide and gives me acceptable SWRs. Okay, so as I said, we're going to start with 14.1. Okay, I've got this in AM, and we'll uh, direct the camera at the meter, and we'll be able to see how it performs. So I'm transmitting this at about 200 watts. I'm keeping it low for safety reasons, and uh, you can see the SWRs going up and down, and I can tune this frequency to a one-to-one -one SWR. Now we'll go ahead and change the frequency. Bring it down to 10.1, which would be 30 meters. And we'll go ahead and uh, make some adjustments here. Trying to get the power level down to an uh, acceptable level. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing. We'll adjust it. You see the needle moving. That looks pretty good there. That's about a one. Point one to one. So uh, very good SWRs for both of those bands. Um, I have a chart up here. This chart's available on the internet. I have it up a bit high, so bear with me. But um, here's SWR of one. Here's 1.5. Okay, so even at a 1.5 SWR, your percentage of reflected power is only about 4%. Okay, so I consider anything... 1.5 or below actually very very good performance particularly using a long wire antenna 
So I just wanted to make this short video and show how it works with the linear amplifier. Um, it will work with a bipolar amplifier, tube amplifier, LV MOS. It really uh, doesn't matter. It's not that. It's not that uh, critical. Um, you just want to be able to match the SWRs of your antenna system to the output impedance of the amplifier, which is 50 ohms. Okay, hope this was helpful. RF man.